this video, we will explore a bit further the question of intention in hate speech as opposed to interpretation of hate speech. The intention of a speaker plays a big role in defining whether or not there is hate speech. If I say a hateful word without having the intention to do harm, I am more likely to be forgiven than if I intended to do harm. People often cause offense without meaning to and then regret it and perhaps even retract their words. It is even possible that I may express hate against a person or a group without feeling hatred for the person or the group, or without knowing the impact of what I said. For example, when a person does not know the meaning of the words they used, if I say, wipe out transsexuals, as a joke, in a private email to a friend, this is different than when I post it on the Facebook page of a transgender person, knowing that the person is transgender. Of course, both statements are intolerant and nasty, but one is said with the intention to hurt. At the very least, the two cases would require a different response. But today, defining hate speech only based on the intention of the person is more and more put into question. We could say that there is a hate speech when there are people who feel insulted or intimidated by an expression of hate. But feeling insulted or threatened can vary greatly from person to person and from situation to situation. If I am a transgender woman, I am of course best positioned to detect, to detect when a word is offensive towards transgender women in general, but only if it is considered offensive by a majority of transgender women. In my community, there can be differences of opinions whether or not a word or expression is considered hate speech. Members of a majority group often do not perceive a word as insulting because it is not directed against them, but against one group which does not correspond to the majority norm. Members of a socially discriminated group might develop some hypersensitivity when they are constantly insulted and feel that expressions supposed to be neutral by a majority are not neutral to them. In that case, it is difficult to define hate speech in general terms. Also, a hateful word can be explicit, for example, in the expression, Roma people are lazy. But in other examples, this might be much more difficult to see. A sentence like, he is an honest and hardworking person even though he is Roma, seems to attribute a positive quality to an individual Roma. But by emphasizing it is, as something unusual, it communicates that it is unexpected that a Roma person is hardworking. In that case, hate is not explicit but implicit and harder to detect and report. Certain political groups often use the strategy of implicit hate speech. For example, if a party constantly emphasizes that migrants are welcome as long as they abide by our laws, the statement is trivial because it is obvious that everyone should respect the law. But the statement could be interpreted as hate because it assumes migrants usually do not respect the law. So, what can we learn from all this is that defining hate speech is still widely debated and should be seen in context.